What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. I'm super excited. We have a special guest zooming in from Las Vegas. She's actually originally from France. Her name is Mar Marielle Belus. She is a quantum life, a certified quantum life coach, EFT tapping specialist, and an advanced Reiki practitioner. Marielle, thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to hear your story. Um, we talked a little bit before we started recording. So can you please introduce yourself to the audience and tell them a little bit about your background? Hi, uh, thank you for having me here, first of all. Um, so my background, I don't know how far you want me to go, but to make it short, um, you know how some people become coaches because they find their purpose. Yes. My purpose always ran after me. I started uh, coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say I, I couldn't say no. Um, back then, when I was in high school, uh, girls were already talking uh, talking to me and coming to me when they were in pain, and it continued like that for many years, um, to a point where, especially people in pain, I had a soothing effect because I'm I'm very non judgmental. And I can see people's strength. And because I can feel people, I could feel their pain and I knew what to say somehow intuitively. And at a certain point, uh, so I'm a single mom myself, coaching single moms. Uh, I've been coaching people for years on relationships. And at a certain point I said, okay, I might as well get certified and make money from this. Sure. Because I love doing it. Uh, Self-development is my passion. S spiritual growth is my passion. And that's what I did. And I started growing my business on the side of my main job as a single mom. And when my kids became teenagers, they started acting out. And they started really acting out in a way that was self-sabotaging. And even more seriously than that, uh, in ways that were self-destructive and potentially dangerous. Yeah. And that spiraled me into a depression without even knowing. I ended up wishing I would just disappear. I, wouldn't, I would never kill myself. But I was saying things like, if God wanted to take me, I would be okay. Yeah. And that made me feel so ashamed and so guilty because I loved my kids. Yeah. So... I couldn't even see that I didn't like my life right. until one night I woke up in tears and I realized I don't like my life. And I started sobbing because finally I could admit that to myself. I, uh, it was stronger than the shame. And from that point on, I started using, doubling my, my routine, my spiritual practices and my morning routines and evening routines to bounce back from depression and really applying what I teach my clients basically, but multiplied. And when I was back to myself, I made a promise to myself that no mom would struggle alone. So I changed the direction of the business. I changed the direction of my podcast. And that's why now I help single moms because going through that was very painful, was very debilitating, frankly. Yeah. And I don't want anyone to sink that low without having resources and help. That is, oh, that was a lot. I felt like I was feeling what you were talking to me. I was like, I'm, I'm on the verge of tears right now because I can feel like what you went through. Um, so you're, you're a little bit of an empath, what I, what I can yeah. tell from what you were talking about. And mm -hmm. I am too. I have a, a, a lot of that inside of me as well. And I try to tune it out because I can be very sensitive to that. It can drain your energy. And um, I don't want to go on that roller coaster ride. But um, thank you for sharing that. That is really, that's really tough. And I think that your honesty and your, your courage, and I think that a lot of single moms would have a hard time admitting that. You know, me being, um, I'm a pro my mother is a single mother, like I just talked about before we got started, and my father was not present at all after the age of 15, and teenagers, um, when they come from a broken home, like I was forced, not forced, I chose to step up and work several jobs and help my mom and help be like almost, um, you know, another parent in the household. 
but my, you know, my one younger sister, she had a really hard time. She acted out. She tried to run away. And, you know, that was a really rough time for us as a family. Um, you know, and my other siblings didn't have as hard of a time, but they, they still struggled, you know, so for a, a mother, a single mother trying to juggle it all. And I, I can only imagine like now hindsight, I can put my, myself in my mother's shoes. Like, oh my God, because I, I don't have any children. I wanted kids, but that just didn't happen with my late husband. So um, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. That, had, that has to be such, so hard, so hard. And you have to keep it together. You got to try to keep it together <laughs> because you're, you have to take care of your household and your children. And that's very difficult. And it depends on the scenario. In certain scenarios, the father is absent. In my scenario, he's suffering from addiction. So I had to protect my kids from their father. And that's very harsh on the kids because having a parent who's not parenting and who's not showing love the way it would be ideal for them to receive and to be shown, it creates a lot of damage. And... um, I have very sensitive kids. At least two of them are very sensitive, uh, empath for sure. And it went very far. Like there was a suicidal attempt oh, in my, oh. in, with one of them. And my, uh, my depression was crucial because if I hadn't gone through it before, I wouldn't have made the changes that I made in the way I even do life. Yeah. And I wouldn't have been as strong to help my kid recover and heal. Yeah, that's really tough. So since you have changed um, directions with your coaching style, um, what are you finding with a lot of the single women that you work with? Is, is there a common thread with them or? Yeah. I, I would yes. So. Um, and we single moms even str- even more, but with moms in general, we try to control everything. We try to, you know, we have areas and that's what I've learned. I was kicked in the butt to learn that. We have areas of power and areas of powerlessness. And we try to manage both. When the areas of powerlessness drain our energy because like keeping my kids safe when they were not with me because they were a little bit too experimental with parties and drinking and and smoking and taking stuff and i was terrified i was waking up in the middle of the night in anxiety attacks imagining the worst case scenario and there's nothing I could have done. I did my maximum to protect them. And I had to learn to surrender to whatever people call it, either God, the universe, source, right. field. Surrender that to the universe. Right. Because the same way that it protected me, I went through hepatitis B that, and it almost killed me, but I didn't. I, would, I, I was alive. Right. So the same way that it guided me and protected me, it did the same thing for my kids. So that's the first thing that I see that moms are doing. They're trying to control the uncontrollable. And that word, even control, is a word that I'm trying to banish from uh, my client's vocabulary and mine. We don't control anything, and especially not when we're talking about human beings. We barely have control over ourselves. And I mean, that's an illusion. Yes. Oh, I was just going to say that you took the words out of my mouth. I, so my late husband was a control freak. And I just, I'd always tell him like control is an illusion. Things are constantly evolving, constantly changing. The second that you realize that you have no control over anything is the second that you kind of come to some kind of harmony and peace. And yeah. it's just like, like you said, to surrender, I can totally, even though I'm not a single mother, I am single and I've gone through some life changing events and I've decided that I'm just going to surrender my to the universe and just allow allow that what's for me will come to me right and stop forcing things because i feel like when you start forcing things control it's when you kind of have this internal conflict and you create dysfunction within yourself and and that's true both at a brain level because we have a part of our brain called the reticular activating system that plays like a matchmaker between our inner world and the outside world. So when you're trying to control, you're in fear and your brain picks up the message that fear is relevant to you, is important to you, and you should protect yourself. 
and it's going to show you in the outside world the exact things you need to notice to stay in fear. Yeah. And on a vibration level, I always explain it like an elevator. You stop at the floor at which you vibrate and that that comes from your thoughts so if you want to control and you're in fear you're going to stop on that floor and anything you're going to be matched with is going to be people situations and things that resonate with fear and control and needing to protect i'm not saying that we don't need to protect ourselves against stuff in life but living in that and bathing in light all in that all day long will only make you know what you resist persists it will make your life way more difficult yes totally and and agree. that's where i created something that after that uh, a name came to me was it was co-parenting with the universe and i use it in my life where when i have a challenge i asked i asked for to i ask the universe to show me what's the next step because most of the time another block is for moms to want to see the entire path right and that doesn't work that way you see the next step and it can be anything so keep your eyes and your mind open it can be a book it can be a person it can be suddenly you have an urge once i have a i had an urge to go to starbucks and i met someone there that became a client i mean I have, I call them miracles because I resonate with the word miracle. Not everybody does. So use the words that trigger positive emotions for you. But I've seen miracles in my life to where I needed something. I asked for guidance and help. A matter of, in a matter of hours, something came that was very surprising. I totally agree. Um, I believe in miracles too. Um, I, I really, I believe in following my heart. So if I'm my heart, and sometimes that's good and bad. And I think that with it, most of the time it's good. Most of the time it's good. But I think when it, when it does have a negative impact, I think that it was made, that was meant for you to learn a lesson. And so, but be, and because of, I mean, because of that, and because of my viewpoint, I continue to just, I say, yes, I say yes to opportunities. I just go where, where my heart tells me to go. I flow with it and I go that way. And, you know, it, it hasn't always been been the right decision but nine times out of ten it has and it had like you said it's led me to different opportunities to that have just surprised me beyond like you, like you said a miracle i was just like whoa it, you, you know you just like you can't really explain it because you you just went for it and you just did what you're what you were, were thought that you should do and it's and it's amazing when you open yourself up to those possibilities what can happen it, it's 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 miraculous. So we kind of already talked about how, what you did to bounce back from your depression. Um, and I think that's a really big thing. You know, is, is there anything else that you want to offer around that? Because I know that a lot yes. of people have gone through depression, especially this last year. And I can't even imagine what single mothers have gone through with having to be a school teacher, the you know, online taking, school. Care, <laughs> taking care, taking care of their home to, you know, be a breadwinner, like, oh my gosh. So can you maybe like touch on that a little bit more? So what brings us, what puts us in trouble is to listen to our thoughts as if, as if they were truth. Yeah. And uh, the story we tell ourselves will determine how we feel, how we act, how we behave, and the kind of results we get in our life. So what I had to learn is to let go, become aware of what I was thinking that was not serving me. Right and be able to let it go. But it's sometimes easier said than done because especially when you talk about anxiety and fear and those kind of thoughts create a very strong response in your nervous system. And you cannot change your emotions at a thought level when you're like that. It's too overpowering and um, overwhelming. So I had to... It, in to say it shortly it's a four-step process i became aware of what i thought yeah. and i call it aid a i d d awareness of what you think then in uh intervention on your nervous system if you need to and i use emotional freedom technique tapping uh for people who don't know tapping it's a combination of ancient wisdom using the nervous and energy meridian on the body 
that we tap on okay. with modern psychology, like some element of uh, cognitive behavior uh, psychology. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so you use that to bring your nervous system to a neutral, because usually you cannot go positive right away, to a to neutral uh, base point to where you have access to your brain because when you're in anxiety, your brain, your frontal cortex doesn't function correctly. Yeah. The blood flow is redirected to the limbs. Uh, it's a survival mechanism that comes from cavemen and cave women to be able to fight flight. And now we know also freeze because sometimes yeah. you need to hide. And that is put in place in a matter of seconds when your brain perceives a threat, even if it's an imaginary one. Yeah. So you're in that state and your brain doesn't function correctly. You don't have access to the better feeling thoughts. So you calm down that whole system using tapping, you intervene. Then the first D is for discard the thought that brought you there or the thoughts. And sometimes you will know what thought, sometimes you won't. You just discard, you, you make a decision, stop. That's the old story. That's my old way of doing things. And the last D is for decide or define your life because your thoughts really define your life. So you pick a better thought and that can be as easy as one of my favorite affirmations is I have what it takes. Yeah. I have what it takes. I know that with everything I went through, I know that. And I also know that anything that I need will be provided to me. God forbid, if I was meant to lose a kid, there's nothing I can do that will prevent that. Yeah. Uh, especially with my belief system where I believe we choose stuff before we even come here. If my kid has, if their soul or their highest self has decided that they would die early, there's nothing I can do. And it's right. not for me to even entertain the idea now, no. because if, if that happens, I will be provided with the tools that I need at the time. I know it can seem a little bit morbid, but when you go down to the bottom of your fear, it loses its grasp, grasp on you. Yes. And so I had to do that. And once I did that, I said, okay, I can take an, I can grab another fear. Everything is well in this moment. I'm safe. They're yeah. safe. And you slowly, slowly bring yourself back feeling better. And the more you practice, the more you're, you're rewiring your brain to live in a habit of trust, maybe instead of a habit of fear. Yeah, that was amazing. Wow, you have really tapped into a lot of that wisdom and the experience that you've gone through. And and I and I think it's really great that you've shared you've shared a lot of this because you're you're offering some very valuable tools. Um, speaking of which, do you have a gift for our audience? Yes, I have a three part uh, back to peace uh, kit for moms because they need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it includes a meditation to like clear the chakras to uh, from lower vibrations energies and a tapping session, a recording tapping session to calm down after an argument. I coach a lot of moms with teenagers. It's needed. Yeah. So you <laughs> calm down. And the last one is a visualization that I called uh, emotion intervention because it's helping you detach from your emotion and get the real message from it because it's our body telling us, hey, the way you're doing thing internally doesn't serve you. You need to shift this or, or do, do something differently. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, I think we could probably talk for hours, but we're, we're gonna start wrapping things up here before we do. Do you have any words of, um, can, wait, no, actually, can you please plug your links for the audience so they know where they can find you if they wanna work with you, any single mothers? So the main one is single moms, doing it all and if you're the U in the uk or australia it's moms m-o-m-s because okay. there they, they write it differently uh single moms doing it all.com there i have the podcast i have links to my youtube channel and videos with tapping like for example saying no which is very hard for a lot of people yes and uh on facebook same thing i have a facebook group single moms doing it all um, I'm also on Instagram, but I'm more active on Facebook and on Clubhouse. Oh, okay, uh, on good. Clubhouse yeah. under my name. 
Awesome. Muriel Felus, and it's on my website. I will put all the links in the description of the episode. Muriel, before we uh, wrap things up, are there any last words or pieces, of, like a words of wisdom you'd like to, uh, to leave with the audience? Yes. Yeah, so you have what it takes to deal with your challenges, whatever they are, and you are not alone. You are not alone. Start looking around you. You will notice if you say there is help out there, help is coming to me. You'll notice ways. And there is the invisible help that is the most powerful one. Tap into that resource. It will create miracles of things that you, you can't even think in your life. Agreed. Totally agree. I love it. Oh my gosh. I'll have to have you back for another episode and, and hear more words of wisdom from you because I think that what you're off, what you offer is very valuable coming from, a, you know, having a mother that was a single mother. So, um, and, and there's a lot out there. We, before we started recording, we said there's like over 50% of, you know, divorces out there. Um, well, you guys, this is your host, Yana Kempel with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live label free. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And I will be back very soon with more dynamic guests.